Okay, hallelujah. Everybody say, believe your blueprint. After you accept your assignment. Oh, thanks for that enthusiasm. Thank you, God, for who you are. God, we choose to accept your assignment. But God, we know that we have nothing. We have no assignment if we don't have any frame of reference, no principle, no strategy to go by, Lord. But thank you, Father, that through your word you have given us everything we need to walk into the assignment and to walk with success. God, because your word is on assignment. And when we work with your word, Lord, thank you for that honor and privilege. We know that your word will not return void to you, but it will accomplish that it was sent for. And therefore, as we go with your word by faith, we will see 3,600 fold harvest through our lives for your kingdom. Thank you for that honor in Jesus' name. As all say, amen, amen. My brother, my sister, if you have no frame of reference, no perspective, no strategy, how can you live out the assignment? You can, I accept my assignment to drive to Joburg, but you have no frame of reference, no way of understanding what is a car with the four wheels and the steering wheel and the spare wheel and what wheel where, and what must I do? How must I drive? Okay, you're assigned to make one hell of an accident. That's only, you are destined for accidents. That's all. You are destined for collisions and accidents. In Jesus' name, not. Why? Because you're not going to be so stupid to be on assignment and accept what God has for you, but you're not getting into the blueprint. You're not getting into the manual of understanding how to do what you've called to do. Rather that you went to heaven immediately after you gave your life to Christ than being on earth and you're not willing to get into the blueprint and then say, why did God allow that? No, he didn't want to do that. Why did God allow? If I'm too lazy to learn the manual and to go for, for training how to drive the car from here to Joburg, is it then God that allowed it? All the collisions and the, and the crashes and the this and the that? No. He told me that I must be serious to get into his word. Hello. That I need to understand how to drive the car from here to Joburg. So many times there's mess ups happening because I don't take the protection of the word. Because I don't believe the word. If you believe the word, you will take time with the word. If you believe the word is the answer, you will have time with the word. If you believe your, your everything in what you build, you must build it on the word. You will get a word from God about your finances, your relationships, your, your job, where you are doing, what you are doing, what you are dreaming about. You will get his word in all those facets. If you believe the word of God is the answer. But if not, just at least be honest with yourself and say, what do you believe? You believe your circumstances is the answer and you will flow with the circumstance and your circumstance will tell you what you're going to do and what you're not going to do. Your feelings, you will get, let your feelings determine what will happen and what will not happen. Let's start with the word. Amen. Luke 1, 37. For with God, nothing is ever impossible. Everybody say, Nothing is ever, is ever impossible. impossible and then no word from God shall be without power no word shall be impossible of fulfillment no word from God is impossible of being fulfilled his word will stand heaven and earth will be shaken his word will stand finish and if that is your faith then you respect his word as the blueprint. Then you respect the word. Then you get into that word and realize I can trust nothing else except his word. Because nothing is impossible with God if I understand that no word coming from his mouth is without power. In that word, there's power. In the word of bitterness, there's power. To bring you under demonic activity of bitterness. And to drain you from your strength. In that word of negativity. 
you will be drained, you will be drained, you will just be pessimistic, you will not have the faith, you will not have a positive attitude. It cannot happen because there's power in that word. Life and death in the power of the tongue. Hey? Hello? Proverbs 18. Are you still here? No word is without power or impossible of fulfillment. It can happen. But now, I need a certain type of word so that I can have a certain type of faith. Let's say certain type of word for a certain type of faith. This guy that has a, I don't call it a heaven of a lot. I call it a hell of a lot of faith because they believe there's no God. Now, to believe that there's no God, you need a lot of faith, actually. The ridiculousness of, no, we don't believe in a religion. We, uh, we don't talk about faith. We are really, you need faith to think that there's no God. That Why can everything be held together like this? No, it was a big bang. A big bang, everything explodes and is... No, but everything into the trillionth of a trillionth of this is held together. By what? Let's not go into this. But all I'm saying is uh, that's a certain type of faith. So an atheist has a certain type of faith. Guy that believes you come from a fricazoid baboon, uh, he has really some faith. Because it doesn't make sense. Because where's the people today that are still half baboon, half human? <laughs> Three quarters baboon. Caught a human. Uh, uh, 10% baboon, 90% human. Well, uh, they, must, they must still be here. Not true. Because we are coming. There's evolution. So evolution worked long ago, but it doesn't work anymore today. Some people look at some people and they think, yes, they are still 80% baboon. You know? <laughs> uh, let's not go there. But are you, are you with me? Okay, you are with me. I hope so. But there's a faith that comes from hearing. Romans 10, 17. Right. So faith, there's a faith that comes from hearing. And this hearing through the word of Christ, through the word of God. You need that type of faith. But for that you need this, the word of God as your blueprint. And faith, the word says faith is a gift from God. No. Faith is what you must develop. But you know it's the word of God that you take with the spirit and the spirit open up the word and it produces in you a certain faith to do the good works that God has prepared for you. You cannot do the good works of God without faith. It's chamors, it's rubbish. But where do you find the faith to do what God has called you to do? Because your natural eye cannot see it, your ear cannot hear it, your mind cannot perceive it. Only through faith you need to see it. Through faith you need to hear Through faith you must take it in your mind. Only through faith you can do that. But faith comes from hearing and hearing from the Word of God. The Word of God, there's no greater gift unto you than the Word of God. And the Word of God in the flesh was Christ Jesus. The ultimate, ultimate gift in your life. Amen? So you're working with the ultimate gift when you work with the blueprint of God. And from that, when the Holy Spirit opens the word up to you, you have the right faith. But there's a word that fear will give you. Fear, this is going to happen. And you meditate on the word of fear, not the word of God. Meditate on the word of fear. This is going to happen. That is going to happen. That, and what happened tomorrow? I told you. I told you. Because you took the word of fear. That's a certain type of faith. There's a word of bitterness. And this is going to happen to them. And this is what's going to happen to them. And that's going to happen to them. And when it happens, yes, yes, I told you. You think you're very clever. You believed it's going to happen. It, it will happen. Why? Because you believed the word from that demon of bitterness in your life against those people. It's the type, type of word for a type of faith. And that type of faith will bring you to a place where through faith you are saved. Through faith you are saved. Through faith you overcome the world. 1 John 5. Through faith you will work. The righteous will walk by faith. Hello? Through faith God is pleased. Hebrews 11, 6. When you go to God, you must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. Amen. 
all but gift as a gift, an awesome gift. That faith that's produced through the word and the spirit of God. Amen. Tell your neighbor, believe your blueprint. Now, when we carry on, he says, truly, truly, John 14, 12. Truly, truly, I say to you, other translations, verily, verily, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he who believes in me will have a wonderful life. No, he who believes in me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. Because I go to my Father. Uh, why? You'll do greater works because Jesus says he's going to his Father. Uh, why? The next season is there. I'm going to my Father. I've laid the foundation. I started it. I started the work. But the work must grow. The work must grow. There must be 30, 60, 100 fold harvest. He was the kennel of wheat that died. Incorruptible seed. For a harvest for the, for the, of nations to be presented to the Father as his home. To be presented by the Father to Jesus as his bride. How did it happen? By people being called out of the rubbish, called out of the darkness. And they are called church. Church, ecclesia, that means called out once. You are called out for a purpose. You are called out on assignment. So church means people on assignment. I, if you say I'm part of the church, it means I'm on assignment. The called out ones, the Greek word ecclesia for church, are you with me? You are called out to proclaim the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You have a calling. But as long as the enemy can keep you busy with rubbish, as long as the enemy can keep you lazy, as, linger, as long as the enemy can keep you to wara wara and not hear your assignment, the enemy can look at your life, look at the comedy of your life and eat his popcorn. He has no crisis. He has nothing to worry about. But the day when you wake up to not be lazy anymore, not to wara wara anymore, but to rise up by God's grace in Jesus' name and say, I'm here, Lord. I'm here, Lord, ready for my assignment. When you stand on attention and the whole thing is I'm focused. I'm focusing. I'm focusing. What are you saying to me? What are you saying to me? Not how are you going to change my circumstances? I trust you that you change my circumstances. No, I trust to hear you in my circumstance. I trust to hear you in my success. Because success is dangerous, more dangerous than anything else. The success originally from God can become the biggest curse in your life. Because you find your security in that in that success or find your identity in that success. Now I'm a success because I was successful in my business venture or in this or in this exam or in this whatever I do. People see you as a successful man, a successful woman. Okay, great. Give God the glory. It's only because of his grace. Amen. That God can trust you with more of that. Uh, are you still here with me? So greater works you will do because God, Jesus Christ started it. But if you walk in humility and that your heart is protected by humility, greater works will you do. Greater works than walking on the water. Greater works than telling, commanding the, the winds to stop the storm. Hello. Greater works must be done in the end time revival. It must be done. But it will be done for His glory. Amen. God wants to trust you with that works. We are called to do the good works. Amen. And a lot of the good works that God has called you to do that he prepared for you will be works that can be greater than what even Jesus did on earth. Are you open for that? Yes or no? Are you open to receive his words and to respect his words and take it as a prophecy over your life? Let it be so. So, if we talk about that, James 2 verse 17, faith, if it does not have works, we talked about this now. 
if the faith does not have works, in Amplified it's explained, deeds and actions of obedience, deeds and actions of obedience to back it up. Hallelujah. Deeds and actions of obedience to back it up. By itself, it is destitute of power. Inoperative debt. Debt. Wastes of a life. When you do all the right things, you do all the right things, but it's not out of faith in your relationship with God. Not faith, God has the best for me. Go and do all the right things, but your relationship with God is not in it. Do all the right things. Now, what's the difference between tomorrow, you go and study, you must do your work, you must, you know? You are doing everything and even better than the other guy, but if you didn't do it by faith, where must, you don't need faith, you can do the job. No, the faith is that you will do it for God, the faith that you and God will do it together. And out of that place, God's going to give you ideas while doing the job. You will come forth with, with a next level of productivity. You will come with new ways of doing it quicker. You will come with new, I don't want to say new inventions, but new, fresh, creative, creative ideas, strategies to do things better. There's so much more. Or you can carry on, you can go on and just do the same thing over and over under the curse of work that hell can give you because of the mess man created. Because you don't do with God, you don't do for God, and you didn't hear from God. Is this the good works? Is this what you have prepared for me? God's going to help you, God's going to help me, we believe. Amen. Amen. What do we see? Next verse. Luke 5.5. Five. Master. This is after this guy is tired. Oh, when you are tired after a day of work, are you in, in, irritated? No. Not, not one of us. No, no. Never. Could you become frustrated? You are tired. Now you are tired. The whole night. Okay. Think of you had to take out bosses on the farm for the whole night. And here the pastor comes and says, no, you've taken out the wrong bosses. I want you to go back and, and, hallelujah. We toiled. We toiled. That's not uh, sit playing around. We, toiled. we tried to catch fish the whole night. We toiled all night exhaustingly and caught nothing. It does not work. We, nothing worked. But on the ground of your word. Everybody say, But. On the ground of your word. I will do it again. I will lower the nets. I will lower the nets. Because only because I have respect for you. Only because I have respect for your word. And only because I have respect for you. It's not logical, Lord. And you can start with arguments with, with voices in your head. And then you are arguing with God many times. But why? You need to hear what God is saying. You need to get into the Word so that you know what God is saying to you. And like we said, it's not what your natural eye, ear, mind will perceive. It will many times be something ridiculous. And then Jesus explained to Peter, throw the net on the other side because fish always swims on the left side of a boat. And then you understood. And then you did it because now I understand. God gave me the understanding. Why? No, God he will challenge your mindset to do it just because he is who he is and because he said you must do it. Klar. Because he wants the glory. He will be honored. Do you want him to get the glory? Then be willing to do, according to ridiculous strategies, things that God's going to tell you to do. Go back, throw on the other side. Oh, all the fish. That evening, how did it happen? Must we also try tomorrow and throw the net on the other side of the boat? You know, then all the fish will be there. No. Now, no, what happened? It was God. It was just God manifesting himself. Tomorrow, today's testimony is not the strategy for tomorrow. It's an encouragement. And that encouragement of the testimony is do what God tells you to do. Amen. Is jullie nog hier? Ons gaan amper voor een landing. Just be, just be, be open. 
in Jesus' name. Okay, next one. If I want to take the word as a blueprint, Psalm 1, verse 1 to 3. Blessed is the man who walks, stands, sits. Okay, everybody will walk, stand, sit. I'm not talking about just physically walking, walking in your mind, walking in your, with your heart, walking while you are here, your, your thoughts walking away from the word that you are hearing. If, you are, if we are talking the word and you cannot focus on the word, just know there's demons, in, not in your mind necessarily, but demons that you are having fellowship with in your mind. Because when you want to watch that game, like we said, that rugby game, or that movie, or you're playing that game, Oh, I cannot focus beyond 34 minutes. You know, it doesn't matter where you, tr get, you are in the game. Or it doesn't matter where you are in the movie or in the, in, in the rugby game or the soccer game. Um, I cannot focus anymore. Scientist says you cannot focus beyond 34 minutes. I'm sorry. And then you walk off the field. You cannot play soccer anymore. You cannot play rugby or you cannot watch it anymore. It's impossible. But for some freakers or reason... There's some pathetic reasoning that when you must le what, listen to the word of God, you cannot go beyond. That's your faith? Okay, but that's a faith from hell. That's not a faith from the word of God. Don't worry, I'm not going to take long now. I'm just saying. Is it not here? Just two people smile at least. Okay. Thank you. Good. What are we talking you will walk. You walk in your heart, walk in your mind, walk in your emotions. You're in a different place. You can be here, look very holy, but in, you're in a lot of rubbish in your mind as we sit here. You can be in rebellion. And all those walking into different places, get that under the guidance of God. Blessed is the man. Happy, happy, fortunate to be envied is the man that does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, but walk in the counsel of the... I said it's 235 times in the church. Does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, but walk in the counsel of the? Wow, counselor. You know, you just, just must add the lur. In the counsel of the counselor, the Holy Spirit. Blessed are you if you can allow the counsel of Holy Spirit to correct you, to tell you no, yeah, yes, that. When you walk in the counsel of the counselor, stand. Not in the way of sinner. Sin, sin is the definition of you miss it, man. You're always missing it. Missing it, missing it, missing it. That is the definition of sin. You miss out on a life. That's called sin. But I'm standing in the way that's called Jesus Christ the way. I'm standing in Christ Jesus. I'm walking in the counsel of the counselor, the Holy Spirit. I'm standing in the way called Jesus Christ. I'm standing in Christ. And I'm sitting not in the seat of mockers, but I'm sitting with Christ in heavenly places with a company of angels and Father, Holy Spirit, and I'm looking down into my success, down into the failure, down into my circumstance, into all the things I need to face. And there, from that place, with the counsel of the Holy Spirit, seated with stature in Christ and with Christ, you look at your situation. Yeah, no, if, if, if that is who you are, now practically what must you do? That's not where it ends. This is a guy. If he understands how to make this practical, how will he do that? His delight is in the law of the Lord. You decide you like it. Some people, they smoke the grass instead of eating the grass. You know, rather they were a cow that eat the grass. Now they smoke the thing. Okay, just laugh, you know. <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> what am I saying? I wanted to say something. You must not just have the word. And I'm supposed to read the word. I must believe the word. I must listen to your word. I must do. You must find your delight in the word. Some people make a decision. And they, uh, under group pressure, they start to smoke. I tried it once. It was so disgusting. I said, who the heck can like this? Who liked smoking the first time when you started to smoke? Just from the first time. Oh, how one. No, man, what's wrong now there? 
Okay, what do I say? So many things, guys. You teach yourself, oh, no, it was not so lucky, but yeah, it's actually nice. It's actually nice. You can allow the Holy Spirit, you can allow the Holy Spirit to teach you how to find your delight in the Word. God, I love your Word. You say it. You speak it. You pray it. I love your Word. But when you get into the Word, and all this other chachis manifest, keep on reading the Word. If you find yourself, the Word is boring, you can read other stuff, but the Word is boring, tell those demons to leave you. Because it cannot be you and demons reading the word. So if you can read anything, but when you read the word, your thoughts are all over the place. Demons. When we must worship, you're all over the place. Demons. Get that thing out of your life. Amen. Delight in the law of the Lord, and in his, in his law, he meditates. 15 minutes in the morning. Oh no, sorry. He meditates day and night. Day and night. Day and night. You meditate on that word. That word does not work in your life yet. I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. I've learned how to be content in all circumstances because I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. It doesn't work that word. So you speak that word. You meditate on that word till it works. And then you meditate on it because it works. And you are thankful that it works. But you don't you will use the word as a trick. But the word is precious to you. The word is alive in you. The word is the most precious in your life. It speaks to you. You have a relationship with the word. You have interaction with the word. Are you with me? I mean, it's not there. You say it. God forgive me, but I choose to love your word. I choose to, to desire your word. Amen. Amen. Now this guy, if his heart is in God's word, if he's walking with the counsel of the counselor, if he's standing in Christ secure the way, God is my strategy. He is the way. Jesus is the way. That means Jesus is your breakthrough. Jesus is your strategy. You are standing in heavenly strategies wherever you go when you're standing in the one that is called the way. I'm standing in the way called Jesus Christ. I'm full of heavenly strategies because Christ is my strategy. He is the way. Amen. And if I'm seated with him in that place, I take his word. I find my delight in his word. I think upon it the whole time. That guy, whatever. Everybody say whatever. He does prosper. Whatever he does shall prosper. You, you've heard that before. Whatever. You know, it's actually, whatever must happen, must happen. I don't care. You know, whatever. Now think of yourself in such a way that you would say, whatever, and you, whatever, and it prospers. Whatever you're going to do, it's going to prosper. Because from what is inside is the work of the word. The work of the word. Not the work of bitterness. Not the work of warawaraness, not the work of, of a lot of lies, but when the word works in you, what you're going to do, what you're going to touch, is going to prosper. It's going to prosper. It's going to prosper. Because his word will always prosper. And if you're in the word, the word is in you and you meditate, then so it will be. I'm going to do it one day. And you're going to forget about this sentence that I said now, that I'm going to do it one day because they say normally after three weeks, the people have forgotten the pastor's sermon totally. That's in other churches, hey? Okay. So one day I'm going to come and I'm going to say the same sentence with a straight face. And, we're going to, and then I'm going to go back to that sentence a hundred times. And maybe read that same scripture over and over and over and over and over and over. And see how long it takes for you to manifest not one of you, maybe other people, of what the heck is he doing? We've heard that now. That is about meditating. If you want to be successful in all that you do and to prosper, meditate means 
I take a discipline to do it over and 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 over again and another million overs. That's meditating. You're becoming part of it. You're becoming part of it. That's like, how can, did you get into that rejection? You thought about the rejection. You meditated on the rejection. You meditate on how that person hurt you, how that lady belittled you, how that guy did this, how did... You meditate on that so that you will find yourself in rejection. And so that rejection will do a great work in you. So whatever rejection will do to you, it will prosper. Whatever people will do to you when they do something wrong, rejection will prosper in you. Because you meditate on the rejection over and over and over and over and over. Rejection will prosper. But meditate on the word. And the word, when you do, it will be you and the word of God. And your word of God will prosper. Um, you are still here? Okay. We're going for a real landing. Okay. We find the next scripture. Psalm 119. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. But you, if you don't know the word, you don't know ten scriptures, you have a light. But it's a, you remember that old advert, no, long before you, your life. With a flick of a beak. You remember that one? Come on. Adrian. Yeah. Emil, you have to make a Yes, you have to The lighter. It was the guy on the on the sea and they're on your lifeboat. They're in a lifeboat and they say, just 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 somebody's gonna see us, and then this guy with his lighter, you know what you know the lighter? Yeah, he was just like, just keep on with a flick of a beak, you know. Somebody's gonna find us, somebody's gonna see us. Okay, that was an advert. What do I want to say with that? Okay, yeah. A lamp unto my feet. But some guys, they are like that boat with that lighter in the middle of the sea, thinking that somebody's going to help them. It's going to work. It's not going to work like that. Come to know the word so that you have a light and a lamp. Everybody say light, light. and lamp. Yes. So that you will not fall the whole time. Not fall the whole time. Because you know the word. And when you put on the light. Psh, piercing the darkness. You know exactly where to drive. Where not to drive. No. Why did God allow me to fall in this uh, slaggat. Uh, this pothole. You just had to put on the light. You know. When you drive with a car tonight. You go there. And you don't put on the lights. And you crash. Or you fall in some other ditch or whatever. Why did God allow that? He gave you the brain to put on the light. Why did you not put on the light? Put on the light of the car. Okay. Now with your life, put on the light. So that is the word. Get it in here so that through the word you will look at the situation. Through the word you will look at the situation. But you can see eyes of fear, eyes of lust, eyes of rejection, eyes of rebellion. Oh man, you can have somebody, a conversation with somebody. But just start to speak about the word and you see his eyes like... What is that? Okay, we're not going into that now. Eyes is the lamp. We know of the soul. Bottom line, cut that out. Your word is a lamp to my feet. Amen. You will always have guidance. If you know the word, you will always have guidance. If you know the blueprint, you will always know where to go. Your word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. What does that mean? You will always have clear guidance when you know the word. When you know the word, you will always have guidance. There will not be darkness in front of you. There will be light in front of you when you know the word of God. Last one. God's word will bring the breakthrough for every day. Breakthrough for obedience and blueprint for every good work. Good work. Everybody say blueprint for every good work. 
breakthrough for obedience. Your biggest breakthrough you need is how to obey God. How to obey God. That's the biggest breakthrough you need. But you will have it and you will be able to obey God if you know the word. Through the word, the obedience will be there. Now, this last one, Matthew 8. Lord, just say the word and my servant will be healed. That's faith. But you know, that last says, just say the word. Look at that lady and immediately you have a response. Look at that guy, and there's a response. That thing says, he just said a word of, look how that person is laughing at you. Look how that person is looking down at you. And suddenly you close your heart again. Just say the word, demon of rejection, and I will close my heart immediately. Just let that person do that same mistake again. I forgave him, but now he's doing it again. Let him just do it once. I will close my heart. You can flirt with all those words, because then you're flirting with all those demons that give voice to those words. But you must have a relationship, a um, healthy, intimate quality relationship with God when he speaks something of quality something of value is going to happen something valuable is going to happen if you allow the word to be spoken it will come to pass it will be something valuable something valuable is going to happen tomorrow something very valuable is going to happen next week why because you're going to value and respect the word of God because you respect the one that's speaking the word Amen. And then you will say, Lord, just say the word. And it will happen. Let's say, Lord. Let's say, Lord, Lord. Just, say just say the word. And it will happen. God, I pray that every man and woman in this place, Lord, that you will help us to believe our blueprint, to have respect for the blueprint that you have given us. God, and when... We hear your word and, and all these other thoughts come and suddenly we cannot focus. Suddenly we are feel bored or irritated, frustrated. Suddenly we just think about a lot of other things. Forgive us for that, Lord, for not respecting your word. But we say to every demonic force that is then present that you will come and set us free by your truth, Lord, in Jesus' name. I pray for every woman and, and every man in this place to be set free. In the name of Jesus, each one that's, that's struggling with that, that when your word is spoken, then suddenly they cannot focus. I pray that they will be set free from demonic activity, demons as, uh, assigned to their lives. In Jesus' name, I pray that they will run to their assignment from you, God, that they will go to you and to you alone. And from that place, they will have clarity, clarity in their lives to have a beautiful life, a life with value as from today, as we walk from this place. I pray that in Jesus' name. And all say, amen, amen, let it be so. Give God a hand. Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. Yeah.